Niham, um, I am David Johnston, and I serve as the chairman for Factum, and I've had the great honor of speaking at all three of the Global Blockchain Summits, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank the folks at Wangsheng Blockchain Labs. This is honestly probably the best conference I go to annually. I look forward to this every year, and it's a great opportunity to connect with friends. But this year, I'm very excited that uh, Paul Snow, the inventor of Factum that created the original technology, is here to join us and talk about how we scale blockchains and how Factum approaches that problem. So with no more further ado, I'll leave it to Paul to talk about the technology, and thank you all for your attention. Good afternoon. Um, I want to say that this is a great opportunity for me. I've always wanted to have one of these mics that makes me look like a reporter. So um, if anybody has some breaking news, I would love to you a question. This is just really great. Now listen, Factum is like dear to my heart. It's been my life for the last couple of years. I could, I, I'm glad they scheduled an hour and a half for me to talk to you. Um, Maybe they didn't. In any case, I will cover some of the high points. Factum incorporates a huge number of innovations and um, scaling technologies to deliver the blockchain to the enterprise. And it is very unique in the blockchain space. The um, announcements. Ah. We have the wrong program. Okay, so we're going to go back to Factum. We, we had an update, it didn't show up. So, I'm just gonna talk, talk you through this. Okay, systems of record don't scale. How many of you understand what I mean when I say a system of record? Well, I can tell you, I know what a system of record is because I did a project for the state of Texas and uh, in, the, in their government system. And it, it was a project to provide assistance programs to all of the uh, citizens in Texas, included uh, what amounts to welfare, food stamps, Medicare, Medicaid, insurance programs, disability programs, blah, 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 all this stuff. I was slated to be on the biggest team for the whole project. It was to write all the rules and prove all the rules. And we were using decision tables. 3,000 decision tables. This was going to be a massive effort. I wrote a little rules engine and we ended up being the smallest team. But that's beside the point. The thing was, the team that was slated to be the smallest team was the interfaces team. What does an interface team do? It's the one that gets the data from the other systems of record. 80 of them. There's federal government agencies that hold systems of record. There are state uh, systems that hold systems of record. Basically every little agency in the state of Texas had their own system of record. And that meant that when I want to do eligibility for an individual, I have to talk to all of them. And what happens if you can't talk to your neighbor? You ever kick your football into somebody else's yard and the neighbor's not there and they have a Doberman? By the way, Doberman's a really mean dog. Now, you, you've got to have your neighbor there, otherwise you're just out of luck until he shows up. And that's what happens with systems of record. They do not scale. What you end up doing when you're looking at a systems of, of record is you're trusting the source. And the source is the only one that can give you the answer, and hence the bottleneck. So how do systems of record work? They work by keeping secrets. You have to handle everything like it's a secret. But most of security isn't about keeping a secret. 
It's about proving the data integrity. That's why I have to go ask all those records. Uh, I mean, all those other systems. I have to ask them because they're the only ones that can answer that question. Data integrity, though, can be done better. So, what about, what's the alternative? The blockchain allows us to build systems of authority. Now, what are, what's the difference between a system of authority and a system of record? System of authority is a, is a mechanism to sign an answer, sign a piece of data, and give it to someone else, and now that signed data can be um, distributed to other people without even going to the original source, except you need some sort of registry to make sure you have all the messages they've signed and you have them in the right order. Hence, we will need a blockchain. So blockchains allow us to eliminate systems of record where we have to ask particular people particular questions with systems of authority where we get to trust the hash, we get to trust the signature, we get to trust the ledger, we get to trust the cryptography. Trusting the cryptography can scale. All right. Factum organizes the data a little different. This is where I really, really, really would like my picture. But I don't have my picture. I bet I can find my picture, though. Somewhere in this old one. Ah, oh, there it is. There's my picture. Okay. The idea is to create Merkle trees, anchor them into the most secure chains that exist. I'm told this is a, a weapon. It doesn't work. Okay, <clears throat> these are the most secure chains that exist. Bitcoin has the most proof of work. Ethereum is quite the competitor. Ripple exists. And that would be interesting. And there's also private blockchains. What, who do you trust? If you're, if you're deploying an enterprise application to a bank, who do they trust? They trust other banks. So you may need a private blockchain to be your um, authority. And um, let's see. Did I cover everything I wanted to here? Do, 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 do. Yes, I think I did. All right. So what are we going to do? Wow. That's the right slide. What, I, but, but what we want to do is we want to create this kind of picture. We want to create this kind of picture, but we don't want any extra stuff in it. That's how we're going to scale. All right? One, one observation right up front, if you didn't catch it, is factum is, let, let's, let's put it this way, there's a continuum. You have Bitcoin, and it does some computation. It checks and validates transactions. You have Ethereum that does smart contracts. Maybe it's over here. A lot of computation. Factum is over here. We don't do anything. Okay? All we want to do is make sure your data is accurately recorded in the Merkle tree. So that's checking your data against the hash. So Factum can scale the same way BitTorrent can scale, right? <clears throat> but we can't let the system get clogged up. So we want to segregate our data. Now what we did was we took the signatures out of the transactions and so, that, so that later at a, a future date, you can drop the signatures out of any of the, fact, the token transactions that occur in Factum. Uh, does anybody know what that is? Is that like a segregated witness? We didn't know it had a name. Okay. Um, the other thing is, the factory transactions, why should they hold the data? And if they don't hold the data, we'd like to be able to drop them too. So we put that in. <clears throat> Lastly, there's a very interesting idea, and that is if you're responsible for recording the data, how can we make sure 
that nobody gets to censor the data. Well, in fact, the, the protocol commits to recording the data by paying for it with a hash of the data before the data is revealed to be recorded into the tree in the previous slide. So it's a commit reveal cycle. It's anti-censorship, anti but it also means that I have a transaction that I can get rid of. So I segregate that away. So I segregate away the signatures from the factory transactions. I segregate the factory transactions from the commits, and I throw the commits away so that I just have data in the architecture that, that gets preserved for your applications. Also, that data is organized in the chains that you decide to create, so that whole blue area there was a stack of chains. You only need Oh, please go back. back. Why does it back want to look forward? You only need your data. Let's say that yellow bar is your chain. That's the only thing you need. You don't need all those other chains that aren't doing stuff that relates to your application. Okay. And if all you're creating is data, I had to do this. Um, this is a call out to Brian Deary. He pointed out that Angela Merkel invented Merkel trees. Um, this is a picture that proves it, and uh, basically the hash that ends up in Bitcoin and in Ethereum and all those places, that is protecting your data, and it has almost no overhead from the blockchain accounting, what I, what I call it, blockchain accounting, it has none of that, because that is not interesting to your application, which I assume means an immutable ledger. <clears throat> and it's, that's the wrong way. Lastly, if blockchains are going to be used, public blockchains are going to be used by enterprise, they can't touch a tradable token. So Factum is the only protocol out there today that has a token credit model. You can understand a credit pretty easily as just prepaid fees. But they're prepaid fees in their own address where you sign your, your messages with the private key and those prepaid addresses, you know, the, the value, the balance of your entry credits is decremented as you use the protocol. You can't trade them. You can't get any refunds. If somebody breaks into your application and steals your private key for your entry credit address, they just stole a set of coupons for diapers. In other words, you can only use it to write into Bitcoin. Nobody steals coupons because they're limited use. Entry credits are limited use. It increases the security of your applications. Furthermore, since you are buying the entry credits in a, a token transaction, the person buying the entry credits doesn't have to hold the tradable token. So a bank can buy as many entry credits as they want, and they don't have the risk of uh, falling under the money service business or money transfer business or KYC or AML or anything else because all they have is a non-tradable um, subscription effectively to use the public blockchain. And Merkle tree was out of work. And this was introduced. Wow. I did the, a few of those without notes. You all, I, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our uh, little talk about Factum. I would like to point out that as great as I am, please be there. Go, go. There you are. It wasn't me alone. We have a great team. We have actually over 35 people working on the project. Um, David uh, got me sucked into uh, doing this project, and uh, all these other people are 
um, really carrying the whole load. <clears throat> and they're very good, very professional, and I love working with them. So please join us on WeChat. Thank you.